2019 pandemic made our live regional finals impossible, we moved all of our events online. So half of the speakers that you're going to hear from tonight last delivered their speeches on stage at a regional final. Others over it really quickly. Um, if you could just bear with us for five minutes, um, we hope that we'll still be able to run to time. Hello, and on behalf of Speakers Trust and the Jack Petchy Foundation, I'd like to welcome you to the 2020 Grand Final of Jack Petchy's Speak Out Challenge. My name is Philip Allenson, I'm Head of Events at the Jack Petchy Foundation, and I am so pleased to be one of your hosts here this evening. Now, this is the 15th year of Jack Petchy's Speak Out Challenge, and of course, it has been a year like no other. That's why we are so pleased that you are with us here this evening to celebrate those 20,000 young people that have been through the programme, and of course, for us to showcase the 14 fantastic voices you're going to hear this evening. All of course in partnership with Speakers Trust and the Jack Petchy Foundation. Now, before we hear from Alana from Speakers Trust, this year at the Jack Petchy Foundation, we celebrated two very special birthdays. Firstly, it's our 21st birthday at the Foundation. That's 21 years of encouraging, inspiring, and celebrating young people's achievement throughout London and Essex. The second birthday was that of Sir Jack himself, and he reached the grand young age of 95 in July this year. Therefore, at the Foundation, we decided to put together a short video about Sir Jack, how he became who he is, and then why he decided to give so much back to young people. We hope you enjoy it. It is 1925. The world has seen pandemic, recession and war. Into this world on the 19th of July in East London, Sir Jack Petchy CBE was born. From a loving family and with little opportunity, full of ambition. He made his way into the world. He left school at just 13 years old. He knew he had to work hard. He knew he had to be brave. He knew he had to be determined. He was told he would never make management material. He proved them wrong. He became one of the most successful businessmen in Britain. He went on to establish the Jack Petchy Foundation in 1999 to inspire and motivate young people to achieve. Success was never going to be easy, but he wouldn't take no for an answer.
Today we celebrate Sir Jack's 95th birthday. Today we celebrate 21 years of the Jack Petchy Foundation. Today we celebrate Sir Jack's determination. I drink champagne with kings and queens. The politicians praise my name. The tolls were someone else's dreams. The pitfalls of the man I became. For years and years, I chased their cheers. A crazy speed of always needing more. But when I stop and see you here, I remember who all this Sir Jack, I want to say thank you for giving so many opportunities to young people like myself. Thank you, Sir Jack, for arming young people like me with the skills to make a significant contribution to the community. Thank you, Sir Jack, for the opportunities and confidence you have given the youth. Thank you, Sir Jack, for teaching me to use my voice and then giving me a platform with which to do so. Thank you, for it, Sir Jack, for allowing me to believe in myself. Thank you. Thank you, Sir Jack. Because if we think we can, we can. So I'm so happy to be able to wish the Foundation happy 21st birthday. Long may you reign, Jack. You're an amazing man and we love you. Well done, everybody. If you think you can, you can. Good evening. I am Programs Director at Speakers Trust, and it has been my privilege to work with the young people that you are going to hear from tonight. I have to tell you, you are in for a real treat. Before we hear their speeches, I'd just like to share a little bit about the journey that brought them here this evening. Jack Petchy's Speak Out Challenge is open to Year 10 students in every state school in London and Essex. Each of tonight's speakers had a full day of communication skills training in school with one of our expert trainers, culminating in standing up and speaking out in front of their peers on a subject that they are passionate about. That training is designed to improve confidence, empathy and resilience and to raise aspirations. Tonight's brilliant speeches are the best example of just how impactful that training is. 
2020 was an extraordinary year for everyone and a year where communication and connection were more important than they have ever been. That's why we were determined that no young person should miss out on the Jack Petchy Speak Out Challenge opportunity. When the COVID-19 pandemic made our live regional finals impossible, we moved all of our events online. So half of the speakers that you're gonna hear from tonight last delivered their speeches on stage at a regional final. And the other half last delivered their speeches on camera at a digital final. And they are all fantastic speakers with really important messages to share. In total, we worked with nearly 20,000 students through Jack Petchy's Speak Out Challenge last year. And we are so proud of each and every one of them for standing up and speaking out despite the odds. Tonight's speeches were recorded here at Camberwell Studios a week ago, but they're gonna be judged live tonight. Our panel of VIP judges are gathering on Zoom as I speak. So let's find out who's gonna be joining us this evening. Broadcaster, author, and chief political commentator for The Observer, Andrew Rawnsley. The 2019 Jack Petchy Speak Out Challenge champion, Priscilla Ajumang. Author and double MOBO award-winning rapper, Governor B. Winner of Britain's Got Talent, comedian Lee Ridley. Capital FM DJ, Niall Gray. Olympic gold medalist and athletics legend, Christine Ohurugu. Broadcaster, writer, economist and former shadow chancellor, Ed Ball. Broadcaster and BBC and radio television presenter, Sonali Shah. Jack Petchy Speak Out Challenge grand finalist and now deputy news editor ITV News, Mahatir Pasha. ITV and Sky television presenter, Robin Richford. Former Secretary of State for Education and founder of the Social Mobility Pledge, Justine Greeny. Wow, what a fantastic panel. And thank you all so much for giving us your time this evening. We are really honored to have you join us. We're now going to go live on Zoom over to our head judge, Andrew Rawnsley, to hear why he took on the challenge of judging this competition tonight and what he's looking for from our young speakers. Andrew, over to you. Thank you. Thank you, Alana. It's a great pleasure and a great privilege to be on the judging panel tonight. I first want to congratulate all our finalists by reaching this grand final. You've already shown yourselves capable of an outstanding level of achievement. You're all winners at school assembly finals and then at regional finals to be here tonight. You've also triumphed at the semi-final stage. So I'm sure I speak for all my fellow judges when I say very well in done indeed on being here at the grand final tonight. Now, great speeches can come in many different forms and great speakers can have many different styles. Some convey intense passion, some use humour to great effect, some speeches are compelling because of the power of their argument. The Speak Out workshops focus on three key areas for successful communication. One is content, so the judges will be looking for accurate information and facts, original ideas and interesting stories. We'll also be scoring the delivery. Tonight's finalists will be rewarded for effective use of voice and body language to enhance the impact of their speeches. And last, but by no means least, there's content. Does the speech have a hook to engage the audience's attention at the beginning? And does it build up to a message or a challenge to the audience by the end? The judges will be looking for excellence in all these areas. And I'm pretty confident we're not gonna be disappointed. I'm hugely looking forward to seeing our 14 grand finalists making their voices heard. Thank you so much, Andrew. And I don't think you're going to be disappointed either. For the first time tonight, you at home can join us and vote for what you what, for your favourite speech. If you just go to our Twitter, at Speakers Trust, you can find out how. One of our judges tonight is Priscilla, who was our grand final champion last year. And we've had her do a short recording for us to tell us exactly how the judges are going to be making their decision. So let's hear from Priscilla next. Hi, my name is Priscilla Ajumai, and I was the Jack Petchy Speak Out Challenge 2019 winner. Now, since then, my life has been a bit strange. I've done radio interviews, I've done YouTube events, and I've met so many amazing people. And now I get to judge the Jack Petty Speak Out Challenge 2020 Grand Final. So let me explain to you what the judging process is going to be like. There is content, delivery, and structure. Content. Is the speech original? Is it informative? Is it interesting? Does it cap 
captivate the audience. Delivery. How do you convey that message? Do you use your body language? Do you use your voice? Do you project differently? And structure. Does it have a strong beginning and a strong ending? And I always find speeches that are structured to be a bit less contrived are usually the best. I cannot wait to judge and I'm so excited to be part of this. Good luck to everybody. Thank you, Priscilla. And it's wonderful, of course, for us to hear from last year's grand final winner, displaying all the skills and talent that helped Priscilla win the competition last year. Priscilla, we wish you every success for the future. OK, it is time now to meet our finalists. I'm Nemi Lundy-Smith. I come from Frederick Bremer School and my speech is called Lickle But Talawa. I'm Anissa Hussein. I'm from Haverstock School and my speech is called Inner Beauty. My name is Madeline Belogan and I go to Woodford County High School. Today my speech's name is Mind the Gap. Hi, I'm Ava. I go to the Charter School in North Dulwich and my speech is called Why Do I Care? Hi, my name is Tachkira Islam and I go to Seven King School and my speech is called What's in a Name? Hello there, my name is Chris Payne. I attend Sutton Grammar School and the title of my speech is The Benefits of Climate Change. My name is Michaelia Stevenson from Hornchurch High School and my speech is entitled Hairy Situation. Hi everyone, my name is Jerry Ndi and I go to Northall High School. My speech is titled Power of the Voice. Hello, my name is Tanish. I go to Hay School and my speech is called The Truth Behind Strict Parents. Hello, my name is Mia Taria. I am from Chestnut Grove Academy and my speech is called Warrior, Not Warrior. Hello, my name is Alfie Chase. I go to Lady Margaret's School in Parsons Green and my speech is called Understanding the Transgender Youth. Hello, I'm Honey Scott. I'm from Headingham School, Essex and my speech is called Perfect. Hello, my name is Blessing Abiri. I go to Westcliff High School for Girls and the title of my speech is 400 Years. I'm Beth Noble, I go to Hampton High and my speech is called Carpe Diem. Although we can't hear your applause tonight, we do know that people are gathering in homes across the UK and the world to support tonight's speakers. We would love for you to get involved, so please tweet using the hashtag JPSpeakOut. We'll be monitoring our Twitter all evening and we might even share a few of our favourites. If you're watching on the grandfinal.online website, you can download the programme for this evening there and you can tell us who your top speakers are. Getting to this stage in the competition is a huge achievement in itself and every one of tonight's speakers wins a trophy and the opportunity to join the Jack Petchy Speak Out Challenge alumni network with loads of exciting opportunities throughout the year. The top four speakers win additional prizes, with the Jack Petchy Speak Out Challenge Grand Final Champion winning £5,000. That's £3,000 for their school and £2,000 for themselves. Tonight's speeches were recorded under strict competition conditions, including the three-minute time, time limit. And they're all going to be judged using the content, delivery and structure judging criteria. You will see the speeches in two halves with an interval in the middle to stretch your legs and maybe read that program. The judges will be scoring live throughout the evening using our digital form. And we are all gonna find out together at the end of the evening who our Jack Petchy Speak Out Challenge 2020 Grand Final Champion is. Without further ado, I'm going to hand over to Fizza, our first student MC.
that's why I'm kind of tripped off anyway, so. <laughs> <laughs> Is this it? working? Shall I just keep talking and then yeah, they can tell me if it comes through? Because obviously we want. Yep, that's fine. Joke. Okay. Welcome back. Sorry about that. We had a bit of a technical glitch, but that's what happens when. 2020 happens. Um, I, my name is Fizza Zaidi and last year I was a, the Barnet Regional Champion and also a grand finalist part, as part of the Jack Petchy Speak Out Challenge 2019. I am absolutely delighted to be back, not as a competitor, but now as an MC to accompany you through your journey of meeting and hearing what all the incredible young people have to say. Without further ado, let's get going. Our very first speaker. Little Batalawa. Is Little Batalawa. Terry Pratchett once wrote, if you don't know where you come from, how will you know where you're going? I must have been about eight when I first heard this quote. I was sitting in the car with my parents and I remember thinking, how dare this man tell me that I don't know where I come from or that I don't know where I'm going. You're meant to be reading me an audiobook. So please stop with the big question, sir, and finish the damn chapter. I learned two things from this experience. One, I had quite an aggressive narrative for an eight-year-old, but two, I didn't really know that much about my own history or my heritage. I knew I was mixed raised, right? The usual mix, Jamaican, British, English to be exact, with a bit of Scottish thrown into the mix as well. I knew that I didn't burn in the sun and that I had pretty cool hair, but at the age of eight, that was the extent of my knowledge. I guess you could say little but talawa. Do you know what it means yet? I'll tell you a story and maybe you'll understand. My granny and granddad came over from Jamaica in 1955. Already being the minority when they arrived, for my granddad it was wave after wave of problems and when the world tried to knock him down, he stood his ground. He was gonna save up money not to go home but to build a home, to buy a home. He was gonna have a family here and he was gonna be happy. He met my granny in 1955 and they got married in 1956. Ladies and gentlemen, I guess you could say my granddad moves quick. <laughs> and he, they had two beautiful baby boys, Ozzy and Rodney. One of them is my dad. And I was given four powerful names. My first name is Naomi. It means joy in Hebrew. And I quite like to think I'm a positive person. My middle name is Maisie. It was my granny's name. And I'm honored to have it as my own. My third and first surname is Lundy. It's from my mum's side of the family, it was my grandpa's. Don Lundy, a very strong-willed man to say the least. My fourth and final surname is Smith, with a capital S if you please. It was my granddad's name. So if you take one thing from my speech, I ask you to take this. Be like my grandparents in 1955. Be brave, be courageous, have tenacity. Stand up for what you believe in. I say for a fourth and final time, Likul but Talawa. It means small but mighty. Because if you do not know where you come from, how will you ever know where you're going? Thank you to Naomi Lundy Smith from the Frederick Bremer School in. in um, for that amazing speech. Um, sorry about the technical issues, but our next speaker is someone whose favorite film is Up because it captures the importance of life and the obstacles you can face in it. I have no shame in admitting that I bored like a baby watching that movie and I know I'm not the only one. And their favorite quote is by Michael Jordan who says, I have failed over and over again in my life and that is why I succeed. Here, from Camden, talking to us about inner beauty, please put your hands together for Anissa Hussain. How many of us in here have told ourselves we're beautiful? How many of us in here have the confidence to go outside feeling bold and daring? Beauty. Beauty isn't set out to be how short or tall you are, or how fat or skinny you are. 
So what exactly is beauty? Well, according to the Oxford English Dictionary, beauty is simply described as the qualities of being pleasing to the senses. Hold on. What about the inside, the one that truly makes all of us in here attractive or pleasing? Does that not count? I would be lying to myself if I said I could go on Instagram without comparing myself to any influencers. To me, Instagram feels inescapable day and night, 24 seven. I would compare myself. I would question myself on why can't I look like any of these people? Or I wish I had Kylie Jenner's body figure. But it took me a while to realize, and surprisingly, a very long while, that the beauty I saw within them was fake. It was artificial. It was surgery upon surgery for them. They sold their beauty, and in return, as a society, we bought their beauty. Now here's the thing, beauty cannot be sold. Beauty is only within the soul. More than 200,000 teens have had plastic surgery due to the impact social media has had on them. I repeat, 200,000 teens. In comparison, if I told each and every one of you in here to get a heart transplant, you wouldn't. A fakery is a fakery. So my challenge to you is, don't focus on how much we weigh or our appearance, because no matter how hard we try, we will never reach that unattainable goal. But focus on how much confidence we have within ourselves, because that is something we can control. Beauty isn't about having a pretty face. It's about having a pretty mind, a pretty heart, and a pretty soul. Thank you to Anissa for that speech. Our next speaker is someone whose favorite quote is by Jose Olivares, which is, I killed a plant once by giving it too much water. I worry that love is violence. Don't know about you, but I have killed a great many plants in my time. And I'm gonna say it's because I love them too much. Um, they also consider themselves a highly practical person who, if stuck on a desert island, would bring a boat, a map, and a fully charged phone. Now, putting that practicality into practice with a speech called Mind the Gap from Woodford County High School in Redbridge, please put your hands together for Madeline Belogan. <coughs> Back in my day, things were so much easier. The good old days, you know, when every other child died of polio, women were considered property, and best of all, those damn mobile phones didn't exist. See, I've only been on this planet for 15 years, but I've come to notice a gap. And it's filled with everything from people trying to convince me that climate change isn't real, the others saying that my issues as a minority aren't either, and that I'm just too sensitive. I've come to notice a gap, and it's made of generational differences, paved with judgment, and filled with a hundred different shades of ignorance. I mean, do you know how hard it is trying to convince your 50-year-old uncle that maybe, just maybe, he should start recycling, you know, so our planet doesn't turn into a plastic wasteland that, oh wait, he's not going to have to live in. So him, like so many others, he stands back and he watches the gap grow. But do you know what I hear when I'm bombarded with all of this disbelief, because it's not just outdated social views or ignorance, it's fear. Fear of a world that's changing. And you know what? A generation that's willing to change with it. See, my generation's been called a great many things. Weak, emotional, and my personal favorite, the snowflake generation. A group of idealistic youngsters too naive to bring about the change they preach so boldly about. But that's not how I see us, all the time anyway. I see us as a group of people who have grown up in a world where we turn on the seven o'clock news and see anything from the polar ice caps melting to mass shootings, 
who have grown up on an internet but so constantly overwhelmed with global disaster that we strive to change the world we live in. A group of people who are willing to close the gap because we're not blinded to the suffering that it has caused. And I'm here to say that that responsibility should not be on our shoulders alone. Now, I'm not telling the older generations to throw away the happy memories that made their childhood what it was. And I'm definitely not asking the younger generation to believe everything they read on the internet because that brand new iPhone 12 X, Y, Z is a bit too good to be true. Trust me, learnt the hard way. But what I am saying is when faced with facts and logic, you no longer turn the other cheek. When the NHS begs you to stay at home, you leave the skepticism behind and trust them to take care of your friends and family. That you understand that racial and social prejudices of the past still have effects today and that minorities don't deserve the jokes and discrimination that comes at their expense. Finally, it's not allowing trivial divides to segregate us any further. So I implore you, if there's anything you're going to take away from my speech today, it's to not just mind the gap, be the person, the people who close it. Thank you, Madeline, for that speech. Our next speaker is another one who is inspired by failure, finds the positives in failure as seen by their favourite quote, which is, failure is not what defines us. Learning to fail is actually learning to succeed better. She loves music so much so that if she was stuck on a desert island, she'd take her guitar and the ability to use Spotify so she can jam with herself. Um, she also, has, if she had to give some advice to year sevens, would say, learn to play an instrument, but also do what you enjoy. So hopefully this is her doing what she enjoys, representing um, the charter school and hailing from Southwark with a title, with a speech entitled, Why Should I Care? Please welcome Ava Kalitowski. Why do I care? How come I'm like this? What is the meaning of life? These are all questions that we have all asked ourselves. Now, I can't answer all of these, but I will attempt one. Why do I care? What if I were to say that you are always wrong? Now, so am I. Growth is endless. You can never know everything. I'm sure you've looked at things you've done in the past and thought, that wasn't such a good move. And I'm sure that I'll look back on this speech in a year's time and notice mistakes. You too will experience this. Now, I know that teachers, parents and friends will always tell you that once you revise, practice and correct your mistakes, that you will be right. Well, in fact, you're just less wrong. Going back to the 18th century, John Dalton proposed the idea of the atom as a ball of energy. Now, from my chemistry classes, I know it's a little more complex than that. Moving on to the late 19th century, J.J. Thomas suggested the theory of the electron, whereby a large ball of positive energy contained these other small balls of negative energy kind of just bouncing around inside of it. Now, this was a little less incorrect, and I have no doubt in saying that our model of the atom today isn't 100% reliable. You see, we can't be certain about anything, and indeed, we shouldn't expect to be. People get so bogged down on this idea of knowing it overwhelms them and takes control and leads to what can be called the feedback loop. It's the idea that we loop around our thoughts and never let go. Let's say that you're worried about doing something right. For example, this morning I was worried about doing this speech. Now I'm worrying about making a mistake in my next sentence. Then I might worry about your judgments on me when I make a fool of myself. Do you see how easy it is? We have all experienced it. It is literally unavoidable. Our brains are wired to do it. Now step back. Stay calm. Take a breath. <sighs> What's the worst that could happen if you make a mistake? Embarrass yourself. Don't let the knowledge that you've made make you complacent, but build on it to educate yourself further. Although we can never know the finite answer 
to anything you might just end up caring that little bit less. Thank you for your speech, Ava. Now, our next speaker, if she was stuck on a desert island, she'd take some interesting things. She'd take a boat, which is logical. She'd take Bear grills to help her survive, just the whole man. And she would take a book of Donald Trump's most entertaining tweets, which I imagine would just end up in an endless cycle of stop the count with captions, this tweet may not be verified by official sources. <laughs> her favorite quote is also one that helps highlight the fact that your voice is the most powerful tool you can use to change the world. She believes that in situations of injustice, if you remain silent, you are choosing the side of the oppressor. Here to use her voice, her most powerful tool, to try and make a change, please, from the Seven, Ring Sc Seven Kings School in Redbridge, with a speech entitled, What's in a Name? Please welcome Tajkira Islam. I have been called a lot of different names before. My mum calls me Taskira, my English teacher calls me Taj, and my art teacher called me Takira for three whole years. In fact, it's become a part of my daily routine. At least once a day, someone will always say, I'm so sorry, how do you pronounce your name again? And I'm sure many of you with ethnic sounding names can relate with me. But how on earth does something as trivial as mispronouncing one's name turn into something much more serious? Well, imagine the scenario. You spent hours and hours searching the web for your dream job and you found it. That perfect job suited and tailored to exact skills and requirements and you hand in your perfect application. But I'm sorry to say, you don't get the job. You don't even get past the first stage. Why? Because of your name. Because of your too ethnic sounding name. Because society has become so unconsciously discriminatory, we often overlook this major issue, name discrimination. This is when people are treated negatively and unfairly just because of their name. Shamefully, I have to admit, I didn't even know, know this was an issue until recently when I read this thought-provoking article. Who gets the job, Adam or Mohammed? Instinctively, I thought whether you're a Mike or Mohammed, a Sam or Samir, surely there is no correlation between your name and the likelihood of you getting a job. But as this article will conspicuously show, I couldn't have been further from the truth. Two people, Adam Renton and Mohammed Alam, applied for 20 jobs with identical applications. However, Adam got 12 job offers, whereas Mohammed only got four. Just four. Unfortunately, this isn't one off. If you have an ethnic sounding name, you are 20% less likely to get a job. And to add insult to injury, if you have a Muslim sounding name, you are 40% less likely to get a job. Allow me to reiterate that for you 40%. It's as if society is trying to tell me that my hard work, my perseverance, my qualifications will be worth 40% less than everyone else's just because of a name. We as a society have regressed. We don't live in the past anymore. People are judged based on their religion or their ethnicity. We're supposed to live in an all-inclusive society. Just think, how many judgments have you made without even realizing? Oh, and by the way, my name is pronounced as Taj Kira. And I don't mind how you pronounce my name, as long as it's not a barrier to my success. Thank you, Tadkira, for your speech. Now, our next speaker, their favorite film is Get Out, because it always has them on the edge of their seat, almost as though they're about to get out of their seat. Their favorite quote and advice that they would give is that if you want, if you want to do something, do it and enjoy your life to the fullest. So here, doing what he wants to do from Sutton Grammar School in Sutton, telling us all about the benefits of climate change. Please give a very warm welcome to Christopher Payne. When was the last time that you heard about climate change? To be honest, it was probably quite a long time ago because Sadly, we live in times where only one thing dominates the news headlines. But if you can think back pre-COVID to when it was climate change on the front pages of the newspapers, can you remember what you read? The likelihood is it was negative 
And that's, that's what the media like to do. They like to lie and deceive and withhold information. And that is exactly what they're doing surrounding climate change. And that's, that's what I'm here to talk about today, the benefits of the climate crisis. The first benefit of climate change is that here in the UK, we can grow formerly exotic fruits, nuts and vegetables, like almonds, olives and grapes. On Brexit Day, Prime Minister Boris Johnson and Cabinet colleagues celebrated with some English sparkling wine, which is frankly disgusting. Like, ugh, how is it that bad? I mean, there is a reason it's that bad, and that's, it's grown here, where the average annual temperature ranges from eight and a half to 11 degrees. And to put that in perspective, the average annual temperature in the Champagne region of France is 17.3 degrees. But according to the Met Office, climate change could increase our average annual temperature by up to 5.4 degrees, which, ladies and gentlemen, is the perfect climate for growing grapes. And it's gonna be too hot in Italy, so we will have better wine than the Italians. Think about that. And those pesky French, the one thing that they've had over us for years, finally will be on a par with them. The second benefit of climate change is that people will start coming here for their holidays again. I'm talking the great holiday destinations of Great Yarmouth, Skegness, Blackpool, competing with Alicante and Mallorca in the Med. And those poor, poor party goers in Ibiza. What are they gonna do? Scarborough, the perfect location. Now I know that there are some downsides to climate change, like the apocalypse, but when the earth is on fire, just remember that we will have some mighty fine wine and Ibiza will be just a toll road up north. Thank you, Christopher, for that speech. Now, this next speaker is rounding off the first half and their favourite show is Glee because it allows her to vicariously live out her dream of bursting spontaneously into song. And I agree because if I get through my life without a spontaneous musical number, I will be very disappointed. She also believes that you should do what you're interested in, be yourself, and do it all with confidence. So here, from Hornchurch High School in Havering, with a speech entitled, Hairy Situation, Ready to Do It All with Confidence, is Michaelia Stevenson. Hair. What does hair mean to you? Whether it's braids, extensions, a wig, or just your natural hair, how much do you value it? How about this? I want you to raise your hand if you've ever considered cutting or shaving off all of your hair. Well, that happened to me, only without my consent. When I was seven years old, my mum experienced a lot of heart attacks. And due to the stress of that, I lost all my hair. Imagine that. Year two, seven years old, no hair. I'd look in the mirror every day, hopeful. No hair. The next day. No hair. One year later, nothing. I was distraught, embarrassed. I felt like I couldn't compare with the other kids. While they were worrying about the next game they were gonna make on scratch, I was worrying about keeping my wig straight, which I promised was my real hair. No one asked me many questions, but I know how it made me feel. The wig was the only thing that gave me confidence and yet it wasn't real. But why did that make me feel so embarrassed? It's because of our society. They've told us that you need to have your hair in a certain way and look a certain way to be presentable in a workplace environment. Some people can't even get their dream jobs because it's not fit for the workplace. Along with that, we spend countless amounts of time and money on your hair alone. Don't believe me? Listen to this. 
the average person will spend 10 days out of the year doing their hair. 10 days out of the year? Imagine what you could be doing with all that time. And if that hasn't shocked you, listen to this. The average woman will spend 44,000 500 pounds and 50 pence on hair care products alone. 44,000 pounds? You could pay off your student loans with that or put a down payment on a house. But no, it's spent on this. But why? We should be able to feel confident and comfortable no matter what our hair looks like. However, that isn't the way it is. But I want you watching this to know that no matter what your hair looks like, no matter what hair type you have, it's the beauty and knowledge within that matters. Hair doesn't make you who you are. And if I didn't learn that, I probably wouldn't be here today. And so because of this, I want you to think about this. What matters most to you? The hair on your head or the brain inside? Thank you, Kalia, for your speech. We now have a five minute interval for you to stretch your legs, get some refreshments, tweet using the hashtag JPSpeakOut and digest the amazing stuff you've just heard from our seven speakers. After this, you will be joined by my fellow student MC, Maitri, Maitri. See you then.
Welcome back, everyone. Hope you had an amazing five-minute interval. Hope you got some food, had a stretch, tweeted, hopefully. So my name is Maithri Nori. I did the Speak Out Challenge in 2019. Now I am your MC for 2020. This is so special. I am so excited and looking forward to watching all of these amazing speeches with you at home. However, before we get to the speeches, let's see how our speakers did at their pre-record session. I'm actually excited, but I do have this little nervous feeling. You can change nervous to excitement. Yeah, it's yeah. actually my birthday today. Before I did the speech, I was really excited. Then while I was doing the speech, I was more excited. You just imagine like a thousand people just there. Then that tiny little camera, and then you're good. <laughs> Honestly, it was really cool looking at the whole setup and cameras mm -hmm. and stuff. <laughs> It was very professional. I didn't expect it to look like that. I was very amazed. It was just a really cool experience. I've never had anything like it before. More things are being filmed nowadays, so I think learning how to be filmed is mm. good. Coffee was a bonus. <laughs> I thought I had this like whole public speaking in me but when I did the workshop I was like I was so glad I did it because now that how far I've come has actually helped me in so many different ways. It can be life changing to some people. It really helped me to be able to express my creativity outside of the limits. It built like teamwork like I spoke to some people I've never spoken to ever before. And that was quite uh, yeah, cool to listen to people that maybe you didn't know quite so much about in the class and find out what they enjoyed. It was hearing people who had things in common with me. I'd never have the nerve to go up to these people and actually talk to them until then. It definitely boosted a lot of people's confidence in a good way. You take on what they tell you to like stand strong, but also you, you can carry who you are as well within that. I like the Speak Out Challenge because you get all kinds of people, all different backgrounds, races, ethnicities, religions, everything. You don't get opportunities like this very often. It's given me confidence to actually speak out to different people and now I'm here, so it's definitely worked. It's so hard for young people around my age to make changes that we want to make. Older people who like have this disconnect with our generation, you know, we've been called like snowflakes and all that lovely yeah. stuff. If you want us to make a difference, you have to give us the opportunity to do so. If someone comes into your school and actually says like, no, like you are really important and what you care about can be displayed in an amazing way, then that really should happen. From people certainly telling their own stories, you get new points of view and new perspectives that you don't necessarily hear about or hear about accurately. Things like this, where we've got so many different messages going out, it's just such a good way to show grown-ups that <laughs> we can have like a mature discussion. Yeah, I recommend it for every, not even schools, just like everyone, even babies. The ability to speak will convince people that what we're saying is true and that we have valid opinions. If we can't tell people what we think, who's going to do it? I think we hold a power that we aren't even aware of. Our first speaker's favorite quote is, make your uncomfortabilities comfortable. He also says to be yourself and learn as much as you can. Tonight, his speech is all about the very thing that we are celebrating, the power of the voice. From Ealing, please give a warm welcome to Jerry Ndee. We all want to broadcast our views, share our opinions, and have our voices heard in order to change the world for the better, right? No, stop right there. Rewind that, because before you can even start thinking of thinking of any of that, you need to have a voice. And I don't just mean voice as the audible sounds that people make, but as a quality, delivery, and intent of those sounds that people make. Because just your voices can control others. 
Now, I don't mean hypnotize them. What I mean is the way that you utilize your voice determines how people perceive you. Because just the tone of your voice accounts for around 40% of all communication. 40%. Like, I could have said, we all want to broadcast our views and share opinions. But no. I said, we all want to broadcast our views and share our opinions. Now, why did I do that? One, because I'm not crazy. But also, because I'm using the tone of my voice to interest you. Just like these YouTube ads do. You rarely see a YouTube ad that says, Hi guys, my name is Jerry. No, it's always something like, prepare to get mind blown. Do you get what I mean? Because that's 50 times more impactful. Did you know that on the internet, people search up how to fit in 50 times more than they search up how to use my voice? If this carries on, the future is not looking bright. Talking about the future, I know for a fact that you want to have a successful life tomorrow. We all do, right? And we all have role models that we look up to. Now tell me, is your role model shy to speak out? Or is your role model scared of self-expression? Most likely no, right? That's because they understand and take advantage of this powerful tool that they possess. And that's one of the main reasons for their success. And it can be for you too. A lot of people have told me they want to be judo coaches, lawyers, business people, and marine biologists. Now tell me, how is a judo coach supposed to teach students without a voice? And how is a lawyer supposed to help and advise people without a voice? Do you see the trend here? And I know for a lot of you, you might be scared of speaking to people or you might have stage fright. That's cool. Because if you can't shake the fear, just do it scared. What I really want to get across today is that your voices are so valuable, like gold. But you never had to buy this gold because it's always been a part of your soul. You're already worthy. You have what it takes. You know what to say. Now you just got to be worthy. How I Met Your Mother is our next contestant's favorite TV show. My mother was always too strict to let me watch it, but today our speaker is here to enlighten us on the truth behind strict parents. Now, from Bromley, please welcome Tanesh Varatharajan. Some of you may have strict parents. Some of you may be a strict parent yourself, but fortunately for you guys, you've never experienced my parents. You see, they're a different breed of animal. Yes, I just referred them to animals, and yes, we're in the middle of a pandemic, so I'm gonna spend a lot of awkward time with them. Anyway, let me set the scene. It was Tuesday the 1st of September, 2017, but it was any ordinary day. You see, my friend, he got the new FIFA game. So I had to go to his house ASAP, but the only way I was ever gonna do that with strict parents is to lie to them. So that was the first and last first time I lied to them. So I called my mom and I told her I was going to a football game. You see, suspicion's already quite high because me and football, they don't intertwine. But she said to be home by six. So I ended the call and went to my friend's house and I'm playing FIFA. But when you're having fun, time just decides to not be on your side. See, seconds went by, then minutes, then hours. That four o'clock soon to be eight, 8 p.m. I said my farewells and I legged it home. Decided to get my phone out, saw 10 notifications, five from my mom and five for my dad, so the only logical answer was to call my brother. So I called my brother and his posh, preppy grammar school accent, he said, ha, 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 you're quite clearly done for. So I entered the call and I ran home. As I got to the doorsteps, thought this exclusive excuse, so solid they could even question it. Just like that, I forgot it. See, when I opened the door, it felt like one of the scenes out of my, one of my mother's telenovelas. My dad was sitting on the stairs. My mom was leaning against the wall. My dad didn't say anything, but you knew something was about to go down. My mom, on the other hand, looked at her nails, turned her head, and she said, Nianga Bonne. Gonna say about three different things. One, where the hell have you been? Two, who the hell do you think you are? And three, did I really raise a stupid son like you? They took me aside and they started telling me off. You see, one parent, that's fine. You can normally drown them out. But two, that's a whole different game. See, silence arose. 
My dad decides to break the silence and he goes into his personal history. My parents are from Sri Lanka and there was this long civil war which lasted just under 10, hour, 10 years. My parents were fortunate enough to leave their country early on and they came to this country. My dad worked hard, he got himself a degree and he raised two children afterwards. You see, when I looked at his face, I saw disgust. He thought I did not appreciate all the suffering he went through for me to be at this spot right now. See, from that day forwards, I've always went forwards as his dreams became my dreams. You see, if I had to leave with one quick saying, it would go a bit like this. Whatever your nationality, that's your identity. White, black, brown skin, that shouldn't and doesn't matter to me. We live in a world full of pain and disease. So why can't we come together and make world peace? You and I were different people. I'm just trying to live my father's fable. So if I had to leave with one quick saying and sign, you only live once. So live that once. Out. Our next speaker's advice to a year seven would be to get to the lunch queue early if you want more than like a slice of cucumber or a slice of orange. This speaker has an appetite to live life headlong and this is shown through the title of her speech, Warrior, Not Warrior. From Wandsworth, please give a warm welcome to Mia Taria. I want to tell you a story. When I was about seven years old, I was in the playground and I was waiting to be picked up. I was with my mate, let's call him John. My mum comes through and John turns to me. A and then at um, my mum, and then at me. Is, um, <laughs> is that your, your mum? Yeah, yes, John, yeah, it is, yeah. But, um, <laughs> but she's, um, She's white. Well done, John. Yeah, that's that's correct. And you're um, <laughs> you're not white. What? I explained to John that I was mixed race, and he very kindly explained to me that that was impossible. And then he said something that has been going round in my head for a long, long time. Well, you can only be one thing. Throughout my life, I have been one thing. Quiet, very, very quiet. If anyone asked me a question, you'd, they'd just be met with a blank stare. Until the day I wasn't quiet. I was on a packed tube with a load of other screaming 10 year olds when I felt this burn in my stomach. Although I was burning on the inside, I felt cold and paralyzed on the outside. They said I had a panic attack. I was quite literally attacked by panic. And I don't know if you know this about schools, but words travels pretty fast. And before I knew it, I was the girl with anxiety. Okay, but December 2016, the Christmas play and I was, um, I was cast as the lead. I remember standing on that stage and looking out into the audience. I once more felt that burn in my stomach, but there was a difference. I didn't feel the cold. And at that moment, I learned something I'd like to tell you today. We as humans are so complex. We have so much anger and love and hate and compassion and angst. I am a mixed race, messy minded performer. I am not one thing. We are not one thing. We are everything. Be sure in what you stand for, what you believe in, and be prepared to defend these beliefs, says our next speaker representing Hammersmith and Fulham. Here to shine a light on a topic which is so prevalent to today's society, understanding transgender youth, please welcome Ar Archie, Alfie Chase. So, my name's Alfie and I'm a transgender man. And I know that in saying that, some of you may feel confused or taken aback or even a bit shocked. But I'm here to explain what my life as a trans man is like for you. So when I was about 12, 13, I realized that there was something wrong with my connection to my body, specifically my body's gender. 
So I started doing small things to change my appearance so I feel more comfortable, like styling my hair different, wearing baggier clothes, making my chest appear more flat. And these things allowed me to see myself in the mirror just a little bit more. I then changed my name to Alfie and what I faced in my life was general acceptance. But that doesn't mean that I'm exempt from transphobia. I once got on the bus after school and a group of boys filmed me while shouting transphobic and homophobic slurs at me. I've been targeted online by people saying that I'm mentally deranged for being trans. And these sorts of acts and these sorts of people are what lead the most depressing statistic, which is that 48% of trans people have attempted suicide. But the thing is, a trans person once told me to focus on the small acts of kindness in our lives, and that's what can get us through the day. For example, when I go to the corner shop and someone there says, have a nice day, sir, or when my friends use he, him pronouns and Alfie, my correct name, those things help put me back into my own body. And I'm really, I'm, I'm really asking for your help here to help put trans people back into their bodies by if you're not sure what someone's pronouns are, just ask them. I'm sure they'd be happy to tell you. Or if someone you know is struggling with their gender identity, just asking if you can help or support them in any way. Please help put trans people back into their own bodies. Loving everything and anything musical, our next speaker on a desert island would take a phone, a guitar, and a speaker. Though for her phone, she forgot her charger. But like she says, everything happens for a reason. Her speech is titled Perfect. She's from North Essex. Please welcome Honey Scott. Perfect. That word. That seven letter word, that one word that has one specific meaning but's designed differently in everyone's heads. That whether your perfect is coming home from school or work to see your family or that moment when the clock ticks one o'clock and lunch has just begun. However, nowadays, perfect is based on appearance. I mean, how crazy. Most of us all have two eyes, one nose and a mouth, but we're all still wishing for more. Our appearance is validated by instant gratification, the double tap. This can make us feel as if a picture can be perfect, but look at the bigger picture. Zoom in. Think about the three hours spent editing that one picture alone before making it perfect. Think about the three filters laid on top of one another before making it perfect. Think about the hundred of pictures taken before finding that perfect one. So yes, scrolling through your favorite social media influencers account, their life looks perfect, but that's really not the case. Popular with my generation is an app where you can anonymously comment on someone's profile now at first. This sounds great. You know, your long-term crush might confess their love for you. Well, I hate to break it to you, but life is not, and I repeat, is not a rom-com. This was my mindset one night, so I signed up and left it a while. I got comments along the lines of, you look weird, you dress weird, you act weird, you just are weird, and that got me thinking, maybe I am weird. But then that got me thinking, what if I'm weird? If I'm weird, then you're weird, and so are you, and you, but you, you're proper weird. But why can't weird mean perfect? Let's look at it another way. Love Island, it's nine o'clock, Monday, you hear that opening theme and can't wait to watch the drama unfold. You watch half-naked people prance around your screen for an hour each day. How am I, a 16-year-old girl, not supposed to envy them? Size six, not a stretch mark in sight. Even the people they consider weird, different, plus size, that I still envy. Yes, you see the outcome, but you don't see the unhappiness caused along the way to the perfect body, the perfect lifestyle. So next time you find yourself looking in the mirror, wishing for change, think back to this time. Don't wish away stretch marks that show people how much you've grown, or scars, the battles you've won, wrinkles, the imprint of every laugh, and a smile. And just one smile can show someone not just yourself, but everyone around you that you're proud of what you've become. Because if anything, being 100% perfect in every single way possible is more weird than being weird. Our next contestant's favorite movie is Hidden Figures. She was riveted by this true story of perseverance. And here she is to give us another slice of history with her speech, 
400 years. Please welcome Blessing Abiri. 400 years of torture, 400 years of slavery, 400 years of meaningless brutality against one thing, our race, my race. White people do not come from countries slowly dying from the imperialism they were soaked in. They do not have to live in recognition of events such as slavery or colonialism and the devastating impacts that these have had on their countries and people. They will never have to walk around a museum surrounded by artifacts stolen from their motherland. And they will never have to see the colonists, slave traders and slave owners who ransacked their countries celebrated as heroic figures. Governments have passed it off to us today as if things are better for us now than they were before, because we can go to the same schools, use the same toilets, live in the same neighbourhood. And yet, a black man who was suspected of forgery was arrested and murdered by the police before he even got to the station. But a white man who killed nine people in cold blood was arrested peacefully and even given Burger King on the way to the station. To think this is America's cross alone, would be absurd. A study showed that just 6% of management jobs are held by the ethnic minorities. The black unemployment rate has consistently been twice that of the whites over the past six years, no matter what has happened in the economy. Blacks only make up 14% of the general population of England and Wales, and yet we make up 25% of the prison population. The fact is, although we may experience racism on micro, macro, and systematic levels, racism is still racism. It wasn't just people like Dr King, Rosa Parks and Malcolm X who marched and protested for equal rights who wanted to make a change. It was normal people like yourself and I who also wanted justice. Paul Stevenson who organised a boycott against a racist bus company in 1963. The Montgomery boycott in 1955. We've been fighting for years and years for the day that our track can be as smooth as everybody else's. And please understand one thing. When we say Black Lives Matter, that is not us saying Black Lives Matter only. That is us saying Black Lives Matter too. Because we all are born, we all bleed, and we all will die. See, our bodies are just automobiles which we operate and use. The dealership we call society decided to label mine the Black Edition, yours the Asian or White Edition. And with 0% APR, no down payment, we are forced to own these automobiles for the rest of our lives. Pardon me, but I fail to comprehend the logic or the pride in defining myself or judging another by these automobiles we drive. Because who we truly are lies inside. So in the words of Martin Luther King Jr., judge me not by the colour of my skin, but by the content of my character. Clichés and stereotypes don't faze her. Her philosophy for life is to live it exactly the way you want to. Urging us to make the most of our present time, her speech is entitled Carpe Diem. Please welcome, from Richmond, our final speaker of the night, Elizabeth Noble. No space for regrets can make amends for one life's opportunities misused. It was said by Jacob Marley, meaning even though he regretted the cruelty in his life, he could not take it back now that it was over. I take it as no amount of regrets can ever bring back a missed opportunity. In less than a year, I will have finished my exams and be done with Key Stage 4, around eight months and it's all over. And to me, at least, that is such a scary thought. So many changes to fit in such a small amount of time, so many opportunities. We in our adolescence spend so much time wishing, wishing we were somewhere else, someone else had something else. Wishing we could skip all of this, the exams, the revision, the severe lack of sleep, and skip the living part of life. And it makes me wonder, well, why is this? Why can't this be a living part of life too? See, I wrote the speech initially before the pandemic, before we were all shut up inside again. <laughs> I spoke about taking opportunities like the D of E award or fundraising trips abroad or actually doing a speech in a room with more than three people in it. Not that you guys aren't a captivating audience, but nothing this year is quite how we pictured it. So when this whole competition started moving on online, I panicked. My concept didn't work. I myself was wishing and wishing this entire time away, thinking blissfully to when I can hug my friends or have an afternoon in London or escape my mother. <laughs> 
how could I send in a speech about how great a time it is to live? This is a devastating time for some and for others, it sure as hell isn't great. But it's important. And that only emphasised my point. No space for regrets can make amends for one life's opportunities misused. Don't waste this time. Don't wish it away. Don't spend so much of it longing for the past or begging for the future. Stay here, solidly in the present, and do everything you can. Invest yourself in current issues. Do some charity work. Learn that one skill that you've always wanted to but never felt you could. I, for one, am helping my school diversify its curriculum as well as trying to learn sign language. I am... but trying, learning, taking advantage. This year has been and will be exhausting and difficult but once in a lifetime. Don't miss out. Because before too long, a year will have gone by, exams will be over and we will hopefully be out of lockdown. Will you be looking back and be happy with what you did? Or will you be wasting, misusing a life now with more regret? Grab a hold of every fleeting opportunity you can and don't you dare let go. So there we have it, 14 fantastic speakers. Congratulations to each and every one of them. You are all brilliant. It's going to be incredibly hard for us to choose who is going to be the grand final winner here this evening. And the scores are being tallied up right now. Now in a moment, we're going to hear from the Chief Executive of the Jack Petchy Foundation, Trudy Kilcullen, MBE. But before that, let's remind ourselves of the 14 fantastic young people who have been speaking here this evening. I'm Nemi Lundy-Smith. I come from Frederick Bremer School and my speech is called Lickle But Talawa. I'm Anissa Hussain. I'm from Haverstock School and my speech is called Inner Beauty. My name is Madeline Belogan and I go to Woodford County High School. Today my speech's name is Mind the Gap. Hi, I'm Ava. I go to the Charter School in North Dulwich and my speech is called Why Do I Care? Hi, my name is Tachkira Islam and I go to Seven King School and my speech is called What's in a Name? Hello there, my name is Chris Payne. I attend Sutton Grammar School and the title of my speech is The Benefits of Climate Change. My name is Michaelia Stevenson from Hornchurch High School and my speech is entitled Hairy Situation. Hi everyone, my name is Jerry Ndee and I go to Northolt High School. My speech is titled Power of the Voice. Hello, my name is Tanesh. I go to Hay School and my speech is called The Truth Behind Strict Parents. Hello, my name is Mia Taria. I am from Chestnut Grove Academy and my speech is called Warrior, Not Warrior. Hello, my name's Alfie Chase. I go to Lady Margaret School in Parsons Green and my speech is called Understanding the Transgender Youth. Hello, I'm Honey Scott. I'm from Headingham School, Essex and my speech is called Perfect. Hello, my name is Blessing Abiri. I go to Westcliff High School for Girls and the title of my speech is 400 Years. I'm Beth Noble, I go to Hampton High and my speech is called Carpe Diem. What an honour it is to be able to join you for this amazing Jack Petchy Speak Out Challenge final. I'm really proud to be watching and I know that representatives of the Jack Petchy Foundation Board the Petchy businesses and even Sir Jack Petchy himself are all tuned in for the excitement this evening. So despite all that 2020 has thrown at us, over 20,000 young people were trained in public speaking this year. And I want to say a huge well done to all the Speakers Trust team. You've really pulled out the stops to be there for young people. And on behalf of all of us, I just want to say thank you. Every year, I'm really overwhelmed by the quality of the speeches, and this year is no exception. I am so impressed with the way that our finalists have powered through a pandemic to get to this final. You are all absolutely amazing, and I salute your courage, your determination, and your persistence. Our VIP judges have an impossible job to do. So I don't want any of you viewing from home this evening feeling disappointed because you didn't win. I can tell you, you have won. You are amazing. Every single one of you deserves to be recognised 
and we are all absolutely proud of you. So well done. Keep using your voice to influence change and positivity in our world. We really do need you. I can't wait to meet you all in person in 2021. Thank you and good luck. Okay, so the judges are submitting their scores and very, very soon we are gonna know who tonight's champion is. But before we announce that winner, we're gonna go over to some of our judges to hear what they thought of their experience this evening. We're gonna start with Christine. Christine, why do you think it's young, important that young people share their messages? It's incredibly important that young people share these messages. Um, what an incredibly high caliber of speeches we heard and, I just think that whatever the result is today, that they should take huge pride in what, what they've done, the journey that they've they've taken to get here. And because it's this journey that they can really learn some really important lessons. And um, yeah, it's fantastic. And I think these, these are the young people of tomorrow who will be striving forward and really making significant change that will benefit everyone. And, um, Judging by what we saw, I think it's, it's, we have a lot to look forward to and it's only the start and these guys are pretty impressive. Thank you so much, Christine. Uh, can we hear from Lee next? Lee, I'm gonna ask you the same question and say, why do you think it's important that young people share their messages? I think it's very important that young people share their message because they are the future of the country. The world is pretty messed up at the moment, so it's vital that young people like this get to have their say. Hopefully they will be able to help make the changes that will benefit us all. I really appreciate all the hard work that every young person put in to get their message across in the best possible way. It's certainly given me a lot to think about. Yes, I think we've all had a lot of food for thought tonight, Lee. Thank you so much. Okay, so we're going to hear from Robin. Robin, can you tell me what tonight's speeches have meant to you? Well, I just firstly like to say, wow, I was extremely <laughs> impressed. I don't know what I was expecting, but that definitely wasn't it. Um, so congratulations to all the finalists. I think that it's been absolutely amazing this evening. Um, I think the speeches have meant to me that, you know, I think sometimes in society and everything that goes on, we almost forget and um, wrongly forget to give the young people that platform. And I just think tonight is amazing to hear, you know, how they feel about, you know, and their perspective on the world as well. I know I've definitely learned um, a lot and I, I feel like a lot of them are going to be after my job soon. Um, but it was fantastic. So congratulations, guys. Thank you so much, Robin. Uh, I'm going to hear next from Mahatia, who took part in the Speak Out Challenge himself uh, some years ago. I won't say exactly when. Mahatia, uh, what would you like to say to, to tonight's speakers? Oh, I'm truly, truly inspired. Um, and relieved, reassured that the, the future is in very uh, safe hands after seeing some of the uh, skill on display tonight. Uh, huge congratulations to you all. You're all winners in your own right for being here. I remember just how scary and daunting it was when I took part in the competition all those years ago. So I know exactly how you're feeling. Uh, chin up, no matter what happens, you're all winners tonight. And I'm very, very impressed. Thank you so much, Mahiti. What what did you speak about when you spoke? Do you remember? Do you still have that speech in your head? Sorry, there was a bit of break up there. What was that? Uh, what was your speech about back in back in the day? Oh, I was talking about uh, my identity. So being a, a British Bangladeshi uh, and what that went, meant for me and my experiences uh, sort of growing up. So I do remember it quite, uh, quite clearly. And uh, yeah, anytime I speak to people about the Jack Petty Speak Out Challenge, I always say that was really a definitive moment in my journey and uh, was truly inspiring and helped me actually get into the industry I'm in now. So, yeah, huge thanks to the Jack Petty uh, Foundation for the great work that it does. And thanks to you for tonight. Thank you, Mahatia. I think we're going to hear from Ed next. Yes. Hi there, hello, hello. Ed. <laughs> uh, what Hi there. have tonight's speeches meant to you, Ed? Well, first of all, the quality was really, really high. The performances and um, 
the arguments. It made me think really hard about what a, a speech is and where something moves from being a, a monologue to being something which um, is, a, is a real speech. And I think it comes down to, to persuasion. Do you, do you feel gripped? Do you want to really listen? Is it coming from deep within that person? Do they want to persuade you? And do they use all the skills and, and styles to really drive the message home? And for me, the winners were the ones who really made me sit up and want to hear every word. And there was quite a few who had that, that magic, that, uh, that power of speech. So to everybody, congratulations. And to the winners, you know, there were some very special speeches tonight. And um, who knows, maybe we'll see them making speeches on public <laughs> stage in future. Agreed. Maybe we will. Thank you so much, Ed. Um, I think judges are having a hard time deciding tonight, so I'm going to interview one more judge, if that's OK. Governor B, what have tonight's speeches meant to you? Uh, they meant a lot, actually. Um, I think it's encouraging and inspiring to see that young people uh, realising all the issues in society around them and not just acknowledging it, but thinking about how they can make a difference. Um, and, yeah, I'm very, very grateful and encouraged about what the future might hold for all of them. They should all be very, very proud of themselves. Couldn't agree more. Thank you so much. And thank you to all of our judges. It is, I think, the hardest job out there tonight is trying to decide who wins tonight's uh, Speak Out Challenge Grand Champion Prize. Great. So a uh, reminder to all of you in the audience that you can also tell us who your favorite speaker was. If you go to at Speakers Trust, you can submit your audience vote and we're going to announce the winner of that after the event. So please do, if you're in the audience, go ahead and tell us who your favorite was and we'll see if it lines up with all of our esteemed judges' choices. And while we wait for the scores to come through, I'm going to read some of the Brilliant tweets, and thank you so much to all of you out there who've really engaged with this event tonight. Uh, we might not be in an auditorium together, but it does feel like we have a huge audience out there. And I know that there are people watching from all over the world. Um, so thank you all for joining us. So let's see what people have said. Martin Thomas said, well done to the team from Speakers Trust and Jack Petchy Foundation for delivering a fully online JP Speak Out. Thank you, Martin. Showcasing the fascinating perspectives of Britain's teens. Uh, I think we've all learnt a lot this evening. Tim Campbell said, Speak Out Challenge, this is a hashtag, it's hard to read out, hang on. Speak Out Challenges, 15th year live and brave this year online. We do feel brave, but also I think we're all feeling very proud. Uh, Tim Campbell says, thank you, Sir Jack, for over 133 million invested in the next generation and thousands given the confidence to think they can. And I think we were all moved by the film earlier from Sir Jack Petchy on his 95th year, the enormous amount of change that he has done in his lifetime. And we are so grateful and I think he's watching tonight so thank you so much Sir Jack for everything you've done for the young people here tonight for the 20,000 young people out there who are also hopefully tuned in and watching us this evening. Um, Elaine Powell who is one of our fantastic trainers who goes into schools all over the country to train these young people she says I'm so excited to watch these outstanding regional contestants deliver their voice message and story. Hashtag JP speak out remember that's the hashtag everybody Thank you from thank you to Speakers Trust and Jack Petchy Foundation for giving over 20,000 young people a powerful platform to share. Well, thank you, Elaine, and thank you to all of the trainers who have worked so hard to make this experience possible when at times it felt impossible. They've gone out into schools, they've gone into schools on Zoom, they've done an incredible job. Okay, we're gonna hear, keep hearing from judges while we get the scores calculated. So the next judge I'm gonna hear from is Sonali. Sonali, what would you like to say to tonight's speakers? I just want to say a really big well done. The level of confidence was off the charts and I don't know any of you in person and I'm so sorry we weren't all together in person, but actually I feel so proud of you all because not only did so much resonate, but also you brought issues to the table that perhaps not all of us spend time thinking out about because of our backgrounds, because of our circumstances, because of how busy we are. And I think just hearing those voices tonight enables us to go away and think about things. So some of the best speeches I think are the ones where I felt there was takeaway, where it left me with a thought and it prompted me 
to think about that issue a little bit more and it made me care and some of them were so mesmerizing. You all were brilliant, I have to say, and the level was right up there. So congratulations for making it to the grand final. Such an impressive level out there. And I know it's tough in a, in a COVID year and we would all have all been in an auditorium together and it's lovely to see everyone in person, but you made it happen and you brought it to the table. So well done. Thank you so much. Thank you, Sonali. And again, to all of our judges. OK, I'm going to hear a little bit more from the audience. I think I'm hearing whispers that we're nearly there. We're nearly there, everybody, building the tension for you all. Oh, OK, hang on. I think I'm getting word that we are, in fact, there. OK, the scores are in. That's the moment that we've all been waiting for. I'm going to hand over to Philip to tell us who our champion is. Hello, everyone. And firstly, Alana, fantastic covering, by the way. You did a brilliant job of uh, covering while well, that's all going on. Thank you so much for hearing from all our judges. Uh, from my point of view, fantastic speakers tonight. I'm scared every year about my own job when I see so many young speakers. So we are ready to announce the top four in the competition here this evening. And of course, uh, number one will be this year's grand final champion. So in fourth place is... <laughs> Elizabeth Noble. Well done, Elizabeth. And in third place, Michaelia Stevenson. In second place, our runner-up, of course, this evening. Honey Scott. Well done, honey. And this year's Jack Petchy Speak Out Challenge Grand Final winner is Madeline Balligan. What a Madeline, fantastic work. And I'll hand you back to Alana. I've wandered off my spot. I'm so excited. Well done, Madeline, and to all of the speakers. Um, nearly 20,000. Nearly 20,000 young people took, took part in Jack Petchy's Speak Out Challenge tonight. So to be speaking here tonight at all, let alone on the winner's podium, is such a huge achievement. We're trying to get Madeline on the line so that we can hear, so that we can hear from her. I'm getting all the information in my ear, apologies. Uh, so that we can hear from her. But until then, I just want to say a few thank yous. Oh no, I think we've got her. I'll say my thank yous afterwards. Madeline, how are you feeling? Overwhelmed. <laughs> it's such a huge achievement. We're trying to get Madeline on the line so that we can hear, so that we can hear from her. I'm getting all the information in my ear, apologies. Uh, so that we can hear from her. But until then, I just want to say a few thank yous. Oh no, I think we've got her. I'll say my thank yous afterwards. <laughs> Madeline, how are you feeling? <laughs> Uh, I'm over very overwhelmed. <laughs> I'm just so happy right now. You, can't, you can't imagine. We're trying to get Madeline on the line so that we can. Oh, brilliant! Congrats. Congratulations, Madeline. Can you switch YouTube off because we can hear it in the background? I think that's what. That's. Don't worry. I guess it was important to watch it. Brilliant. So feeling overwhelmed. Is there anybody, anything that you'd like to tell the rest? The, I think we've got over 300 people at least on YouTube and unmute yourself. Don't forget to do that. All of the Zoom tech happening at once tonight. <laughs> yeah. Uh. <laughs> That's OK. This is a big moment. <laughs> That's OK. Don't worry. Huge congratulations, Madeline. We're all so proud of you. I hope you're feeling proud of yourself and you can expect your prize in the post very soon. So we can't wait to work with you for the rest of the year and into the future. Well done. Congratulations. You've done it. Thank you. Brilliant. Thank you so much. Oh, that's Madeleine feeling very overwhelmed by her win and a highly deserved win it was too. What an incredible night of speeches we've had here tonight. Uh, before I hand back to Philip to close us off, just a few thank yous from me. I think the thank yous could fill the studios 10 times over, but I just want to say thank you to all of our trainers who've worked so hard all year and against uh, such incredible odds to give young people this experience. To 
uh, Trudy, Gemma, Philip, and everybody at the Jack Petchy Foundation. The partnership is far more than uh, just giving us the, the funding to make this program work. It's a real partnership. Uh, you, Philip will tell you that we've been on the phone many times to make sure this event happens. And um, thank you also to all the teachers. I think they are the hidden heroes of our project. Teachers work so hard behind the scenes to make this project happen and without them it would be impossible and the very fine in fact there's hundreds more but the very final thank you i will say is to the to all of the young people that took part that's nearly twenty thousand. every single one of you has learnt to speak up and deserves your chance in the spotlight so thank you to you all and well done and i'll hand over to philip to close us off thank you thank you alana and madeline as champion it is the one time you're allowed to be speechless so don't worry about it Okay, all that is left for me to say is thank you to everyone for joining us here tonight and to the many people who made this evening uh, event possible, uh, everyone on the, on the team, of course, and, and far and wide. Each and every one of our funders did a fantastic job, shared some really important uh, and thought-provoking messages. So we, we, you're all winners. Again, we want to tell you that. We hope you are feeling really proud tonight. Remember, everyone, please uh, use the hashtag JPF Speak Out. Keep an eye out for our winners' videos on YouTube in the next few days. And that is really it. Be proud of your achievements. Stay safe. Goodbye.